Aren't you glad you're here today? Yes. We're going to have a great time today. Sir, what is your name in the back? Fine. Yes, sir. Brian. Brian? Yes, sir. My name's Carlos. I'm the Accidental Chef, and this is the Louisiana Kitchen at Rouse's in Youngsville. And tonight we're going to make um, two of the items that's on our recipe list. I, I brought the other, the other item included a cake that I've made for you before, but I just gave you the recipes. I didn't have time to get to my back to my kitchen, which looks like an early rendition of Warsaw. Um, I had only one thing on my book today, I thought. And then I had an emergency. Somebody died and they needed a funeral reception this afternoon. So, um, on top of my lunch and, you know, so anyway. Uh, but I have to tell you, I just got a note from the, my, my lunch. She said the veal piccata was the best she had ever eaten. So, just for the record, it was easy, it's delicious, it's finding the veal and getting a second on the house in order to get the veal. Okay, but anyway, it was really good. And I saw, I, 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 she wanted grilled vegetables, so I did this and then I added um, Brussels sprouts and asparagus that I blanched for three minutes in the microwave. Y'all see me do that? Then I added Vidalia onions. They're just out. They're very sweet. And then I did fennel, which I also blanched, and then just tossed that and served it with a little Romano, nice Romano on the top. She was quite impressed. Okay, so this is our veal piccata. It's real simple. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Capolina Perron. Thank you. So the capolina, the little bitty, the pomodoro is the tomato. So we're going to have this. This is a vegetarian dish. You know, Sicilians have a lot of holy days where we don't eat meat. Okay? So the 40 days in Lent, probably 25 of them are meat free. So we have all these meat free dishes. So I decided to slip in on the side some of Fra uh, Rouse's uh, made in the butcher shop. Italian sausage. So I just have that grilling over here and I'm just going to grill it, okay? If it doesn't behave, I'm going to stick it in the oven. In fact, I may just stick it in the oven right now and just send that bake light to its death. All right. How about that? That way I have more stove top and I don't have to worry about it. Y'all okay with that? Good. Set it and forget it. All right. This is the water for our angel hair pasta. Capolino, vermicelli. They're the smallest pasta, angel hair. So four minutes. Okay? The minute you drop the pasta in the water. Four minutes. Maybe we kind of lid for this. All right. I find that the lid helps it boil. Okay, I'm going to boil the eggs for the salad. We're making our Sicilian summer salad, which is, you know, just this nice laying. It starts with anchovies, and we just build up everything that we have that's lovely in the kitchen and do like that. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Um, the fire's not on what? The eggs? The water for the pasta. Okay, how about now? All right, thank you. All right. Cool. This is my, one of my favorite, can you get me a can opener? One of my favorite Sunday night recipes. That's what I call them, Sunday night. In and out in 20 minutes. All right? Now, this process here, I'm infusing the olive oil with garlic. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> um, so that's what's happening there. That takes a little longer, 20 minutes. You don't want to do it hot. You just want to do it slow. So you put it on first and you just let it, th and then, thank you. Then when all your guests arrive or somebody gets home, they get that full immersion in the aroma of the olive oil and the garlic and they just feel really comfortable, that whole security thing before your mother screams at you. You're feeling really good. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour these in the colander and I'm going to rinse off all the tomato sauce. So I just have the tomato. The other thing we could do is we could take Roma tomatoes, we could fresh and cull out the seed and chop them ourselves, but this I liked it this way better. Okay? Question. Question. Um, just looks so that there's less liquid. That's why I do it. Less liquid. 
that the ball you know that part in there and you want to go ahead and do that for me go ahead and open those other two and rinse them through there and get all that tomato sauce off all right we got boiling water here we probably need salt um thank you <coughs> i would love a bottle of water <coughs> okay about a tablespoon that's about the rule on that okay thank you so much all right anybody have any questions tonight about anything we're gonna have sort of a Q&A tonight and we want to get some interaction we want it to be not to be so didactic and that you can um, there's my new associates anybody Brian you have a question I can see it written all over your face not yet, not yet. okay hey hey there's two down front okay so how y'all doing today hey good and you good i had my first showing this morning did you hear me oh, no, I, didn't. I'm sorry. I had my first showing this morning yeah okay these are my friends from real estate all right all right anyway we're making um we're making this oh look she's got it no nope. yeah you can take that all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just allow this to keep doing it. This dish is real fast. Once the garlic has, re has cooked, I'm going to add the tomatoes and just toss them because the tomatoes are fully cooked. I'm really just heating them. Okay, and then I'm going to add fresh basil on it. I don't want to cook that long either. So I'm just, this is very fast. So there's no hurry there. So let's work on the salad, all right, while that's doing that. These are, these are, um, Yes, ma'am. Uh, looking at the recipe, it says two cloves of garlic minced. Two cloves of garlic minced? Yeah. Must be a typo. Because <laughs> that's not what we're doing up here. I know, I <laughs> I like this better than the mince. You know why? Because when you mince it, first off, you, it cooks too fast, it burns, it scorches. And also, you think you can cheat and you buy that little garlic in the chunk that looks like, makes it looks like Hemiculite in your food, you know, you don't want that. Okay, all right. So we're just gonna let that do that while we make the salad, the chopping board. Gotta love that. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start our salad. I'm gonna start with a nice bowl that can hold the volume. We're gonna start with anchovy. Now, this is Cinto, that's the same brand as the tomato. I like this one. I like the flat anchovy, so I'm just going to start there, okay? And I'm going to maintain the oil in there as well. I'm going to use two. How are we doing back there, Ann? Great. They're ready. Do we have knives? Wait, just leave it in the sink. Do we have knives? Something, nothing up my sleeve. I need two knives. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use two knives and, and mince the anchovy. Now, I don't want you to be afraid of the anchovy. I know that you, that man in the back that just came in is on his phone, is afraid of the anchovy. Because, you know, the, I don't know, I, you know, because our only experience with anchovies is on top of a bad pizza. It's, it was cold for two hours when we ate it, and the little anchovy bone got caught in our gum, you know, and it wasn't a happy experience. That's not what's happening tonight. Okay. We're going to take two knives. Seriously, people. Anyway. All right. <laughs> and I'm just going to mince, like I was cutting pastry. Oh, look, a match pair. Oh, Ann, you know what? You need to cut. We can cut some bread. Ann said y'all wanted good bread. Is that true? Yes. 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 A thousand times yes. Thank you, Sheena. You like Worcestershire sauce? Yes. It's because of the anchovy that you like it so much. Anchovy is an easy way to season. Okay, those look minced enough for me. All right. Really, we don't have another knife? We don't have a chef's knife? Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. It's my basil for my pomodoro. Set that right there. 
Going to put some celery in there. Sicilians love celery. Start on the green end. You don't you don't I don't, not because I'm not using the bottom, because that's really when I have a problem. Love this knife. Okay. Add some celery. Now I'm going to add these tomatoes. These are really nice tomatoes. They're on the, on the vine. Vine ripened tomato. That's it. I, when I was picking them up and putting them on the counter, I thought they were like the Sanctus Bells. I wanted to go... But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like who knows what Sanctus Bells are, right? <laughs> Hello. We live in a funny world. Okay. All right, look. The ginkgo tomato knife. You know how I know it's the tomato knife? It's the same color. There you go. It's got a nice serrated edge. You need a nice serrated edge for cutting tomato. Okay? I'm just going to cut these little slices like this. All right. You had a funeral reception today. Did I ever tell you about that cookbook about the funeral reception? How to give the perfect funeral reception? The name of it is Dying is No Excuse. <laughs> it's wonderful. It has the perfect tomato aspic recipe in it. And the hotline if it doesn't gel. It's funny. It's written by two women from Greenville, Mississippi. And those of you from the Delta know that stuff's important. Oh yeah, I liked her. That was she was great. That was that was perfect New Orleans. She gave Chris Owen ideas. She was what? Oh yeah, I would think. I would think. You know how you could tell that she always was because uh, they let they let her prior directives be followed. Right. <laughs> All right. And she probably didn't have any kids. Okay. She had two dozen? No, I said, or she had two dozen. Two dozen, right, exactly. Okay. Now we added some tomato. You have a small little strainer we can strain this in? Okay. Yes, the whole jar. This is a uh, fresh oregano. Yeah, rinse them, please. She's going to rinse the um, capers because they have a brackish. You always want to rinse your capers before you use them because you could really screw up a recipe. Okay, the water's becoming, the water's coming to a boil on the egg, so I'm going to put 10 minutes on my clock. And that way they're, they're, they come out perfect. I just learned that and it's wonderful. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. That's your second one. You only get three. Go ahead. Oh please. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to go there with you. They say to put the eggs in a pot with cold water. That's what I did. Cover it. Cover it. And when it comes to a boil, turn it off. Yes. And then wait ten minutes. Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, you know that's tomato, tomato. I don't know. I, this, I just learned this method and it, it works real well for me. Right, right, yeah. Now my son, you know my son the doctor yeah. that likes to cook, he, he likes his eggs to be a little bit not all the way hard boiled. Okay? So I don't, um, I don't like it as much, cause especially in this application because I want that egg yolk to kind of cream up with the vinegar and the oil to make, me, uh, make the dressing kind of creamy in this salad. Right. Okay. Yeah, you got to get that membrane just right. Okay. This is this is fresh fennel, our anise. It's wonderful. This is what I told you today. I grilled with the vegetables. 
so it's really good. We rarely use the fronds or the tops. We're going to use them today to garnish the top of our salad. Okay? All right. Any questions about the oregano? All right. Any questions about Ann's hair color? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we just want to clear up everything. I'm not picking on Ann. I'm sorry. She's going to quit. That's it. She's going to quit. Oh. She's going to quit. See? No, you don't. Shall we vote? Yes. God. All right, vote. Who thinks Anne should have her own hair color? Okay, there's. Okay, good. There's two of you. That's it. That's exactly right. The rest of the people in the room have stocking clairol. All right. My garlic's just about there. You see, it's kind of browning and it's having a wonderful time in the olive oil. You might say it's swimmingly. Okay. Sheena, you got it. You want to thank this woman because when I ran into her in the office yesterday, she says, Oh, I saw you were <laughs> I saw you were demoing at Rouse's tomorrow night. I said, Really? That's tomorrow night? Oh okay. Okay. All right, I'm just chopping up this uh, fennel. It's a, got a wonderful flavor, and it's, um, it's got a kind of a licorice flavor. That's where we get licorice from, the anise, and um, it's got the texture like celery. All right. <clears throat> what are we missing here? That beautiful Vidalia onion, huh? Okay. <clears throat> The capers are ready. You can throw them in the salad. Sorry, what's the matter? There's a sticker in the food. You know what my mother says? What won't kill or fatten. All right, so not going to worry about that. Yeah. All right, a sticker. What do you think it's from? You think it's from the tomatoes? Okay. I have my lawyer call him. All right. I'm going to slice these very, very thin. Very thin. Punch them out. Looking lovely. Yes, indeed. Yes. Hello. Is he a divergent thinker? We spoke, we talked about that 20 minutes ago. So. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm just going to sprinkle it on the top. Now, I've told you before, the only other recipe I know, my aunt makes fava beans with the fennel, and she puts the fronds in the recipe, and then she serves it with a nice Chianti. She really likes those. <laughs> she used to, but she doesn't anymore. My uncle gave me some on Good Friday that he had grown. They were wonderful. They're hard to find. This is true. You know, in fact, it's fact that you should say that because three years ago I had to go online and order them from somewhere for him. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Any questions about the salad? Okay. You want to go ahead and pull some of those fronds off of there? All right. Do we have a bowl for the bread? Yeah, I'll use that one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Done with that. Okay. Any questions? Is there a question in the back? I know, no, I know you have a question. Somebody's supposed to have a question. Where is... Okay, go ahead. No, you want that whole bite of wonderful. No. <laughs> it's your first time, but it won't be your last. You'll come back for the fennel and the big hunks of garlic. 
because you know what? It tastes like potato when it's fully cooked and it's not fragrant and it's not going to give you bad breath and you're not going to sweat garlic tomorrow and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about it, you know what I'm saying? All right. <clears throat> okay. No. That's for the salad. Let's put some cheese in the salad since we had some. That's uh, some fresh grated uh, Parmesan. This one says it's fresh Parmesan, shredded, all right? Now we're going to add our, um, this is almost ready. How are we doing on time on the oven? Can you see? 246. No, that's not that. That's, that's for the eggs. That's the egg timer. The meat is turning brown. You think that oven's hot enough? It should be on 400 convection. Oh, it's getting there. All right, we're going to add some romaine. Nice, hearty romaine. Okay, any questions in the back? Yeah, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is for our pasta. How many people we have? No. Really? Yeah, it looks like it. We've had more, but. 32, 23, 25, 27. Well, anyway, all right, four minutes from the drop. How much time on the eggs? 22 seconds. Okay. Kill that and add four minutes to it. All right, we're going to keep the pasta out of our salad. Although I love dry noodles in salad. Crushed red pepper. I know you have it. All right. Lots of salt. That's, what the, that's all the recipe said. Lots of salt. All right. We have some tongs or something? Yeah. If this does not stick. Um, Carlos, what did you say the eggs? Boiling the eggs. They go in the salad. Uh, no. I'm going to slice them. I'm going to quarter them and put them in the salad so when I mix them, they're going to mix with the uh, vinegar and the oil and make them. Yeah, no, that's it. I just turned it off. Say boo. All right. Okay. Let that do that. I'm just going to move this around early on and get that in there. All right. I'm going to add my tomatoes to my garlic. We're going to rinse that to rinse our stuff. All right. Careful not to walk right there and slip. Now watch this. Peel that and it just comes right off. Isn't that wonderful? That's like dreaming. But I'm Yeah, I soaked it immediately immersed it in cold water, which caused the membrane to shrink. Why? She shakes the pot with the lid while standing on her left leg facing the east window. Perfect. All right. This is great. How are we doing, Sheena? We're good? Everybody's having a fun time? No complaints from anyone? The health department hasn't come in? We're all good. All right. Any other questions? I'm just going to turn this off so we catch up over here, not overcook that. Put a little olive oil on my pasta to keep it from sticking. How about some garlic powder? We have any garlic powder? That's a little bit. Mm -hmm. Didn't rinse it today. I should have, but I didn't. The olive oil will keep it from sticking most of the time all right thank you a little garlic powder all right 
a little salt. All right. Now, I re highly recommend these cracked green olives with the red crushed pepper on them. They're in the olive bar. Have you ever been to the olive bar over by the deli? They're great. Do not try this at home. I'm using the tomato knife to cut the eggs. I'm sorry, Mr. Matisse, what was the question? Oh, absolutely. 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 Hey, how you doing, Nick? All right. Got my eggs there. Oh, big shell. Big shell. All right. We put this on that for garnish. Isn't that pretty? You bring it, all your friends will be impressed. And they'll say, oh, God, she put dill on the salad. All right. Okay, basil. Oh yeah, let's make some hot bread. Big bread. We call this good bread over here. This is what we do. We take some olive oil. I use olive oil liberally here at the cooking school. At least a liter a night. All right, we're gonna add some garlic powder. I told y'all my grandmother taught me how to cook. She was 65. She said she was too old to peel garlic, so I'm gonna use crushed red pepper for zest. I want it hot, 425, 450 on, on convection. Dry basil, you have some? Okay, some nice cheese, grazie. All right, how are we doing Danny? Good? All right. Great. This is for live TV. So this is going to be the back of your head so you didn't have to sign a release. All right. Give me a big spoon I can stir this with. All right. This is beautiful. I'm going to set it over here. And uh, you go, find the pan I make the... Uh, there's a flat pan. That's, you no, know, it's usually down in that bottom drawer. That's the one. Now you just stir this bread like this. Do y'all know if I put salt in here? Y'all saw me put salt? Good. Okay, you, you just wanna stir this until everything's glossy, okay? This is the easiest way to make garlic bread. You know, rather than slicing it and spreading it and re-slicing it and putting it in foil and da di da da yada 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 Okay, all right. Now, um, Anne, if you could separate these, and so they're not touching. All right. Any questions? You having a good time? Good, huh? You in the back? You are? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why do you like the tomato so much? Scamu? Scamu? What's your favorite? Like, I know it's become from Italy, but why do you favorite that one tomato so much? The Roma? Yeah. Oh, the cinto. I just find the quality is better. I don't know. You know, when you cook enough tomato sauce and tomatoes, and you just notice a difference. I just like it better. It doesn't have, um, you know, they use a lot less processing on that side, you know? Italy. Yeah. You know, they make everything here to last through the millennium, <laughs> you know? So, okay. Let's chop some uh, basil. Look at you. Go and go. This is fresh basil. I just love it. I think it's in my DNA. Because when I got to Sicily, it was like I was caught up in some sort of esoteric thing that I couldn't really explain. And I have some friends that are over there right now. And she commented on her Facebook page that she felt, and it was exactly what I... Uh, I had fa felt, so it's really cool, um, besides being so gorgeous. All right. We should all go to Sicily, get a big villa and cook for two weeks. Wouldn't that be fun? 
we'd have somebody come in, Maria, and make uh, fresh pasta every morning, huh? And go to the go to the where they're crushing the olive oils the day before. Y'all know where the y'all know where the virgin olives come olive oil comes from, huh? Do you know? Do you know where it comes from? The ugly olives. <laughs> That's a bad joke. That's a bad joke. Okay. <clears throat> I got it from one of my tour people. Oh my gosh. Saturday night we had the tour at the Feed and Seed. Have y'all ever been down to Feed and Seed? Yeah. It's this rank place down by the railroad track. And uh, it's like a barn. It was a feed store and it's like a big barn. So I was doing this all this Cajun cooking for this tour bus. I thought, well, this is the perfect kind of place for them to get that whole sort of Kajan kind of experience huh? and it went really good they loved it first time we were in there it started to rain and the roof leaked so they had to move their furniture and it was it went from Cajun to Kunas real fast <laughs> but they loved it I've never gotten more positive comments on our Facebook page than that group they had more fun so Immediately I said, well, you know, y'all are like Cajuns because the Cajuns adapt. Man, we got to just move the table. <laughs> you know, it's raining right here. Let's stand over here. It's real easy. We don't have to think about that. Right? Okay, we're going to bring this back up to heat. I'm just going to cut this coarsely chopped. Yummy, yummy, yummy. All right. Am I forgetting anything in here? Does anybody know? Is anybody watching what I'm doing? I don't think so either. I used I use the crushed red. I like the crushed red because you get a burst of zest rather than the, than the ground which immerses in everything. So this will just give you a pop of it. All right? Okay. And where's the spoon? I know you've given me a spoon. Yeah. All right. You set the timer on that bread. Oh, did, well, don't put it in until it is. This is probably not hot. Okay. You can actually put it on the top. The top oven's at temp. Right. All right. Here we go. How's that sausage doing? Looking good. All right. Browning now. Oh yeah. Very nice. Oops, sorry. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Did I burn you? Mm -hmm. ow, 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 ow. Okay, hit the start. The top one. No, no. no, no. I'm gonna start. Hmm? Okay. How are we doing? Everybody's good. Any questions? I'm, I'm wondering. We're trying to have Q and A here. No one's asking a question. What was on the bread? Which what was the on the bread? Olive oil. Really? Garlic. Yes. I just did it in front of you, but I'll tell you. You I'll put have a question. Yeah, you yeah, good, good. I was more asking one of the origin of uh, sin, but that's okay. Um, the um, the uh, <laughs> we put olive oil, lots of olive oil. Good to see you again. It's been a while. Um, garlic, some Romano cheese, our Parmesan cheese, Parmesan. Um, some dry basil, crushed red pepper, and coarse salt. And then we toss that real good till everything's closed. Okay? And we put it on a baguette of shabata bread. Okay? The baguette means it's a long skinny bread rather than a flat or a rounder French. Most of the French bread here is not a baguette. Yes, sir? Uh, your recipe, I just about the portions of your, uh, your basil on your recipe. Uh, what does it say? One ounce. I think that's a two ounce box. And I'm making more than the recipe. Yeah, two ounces. The three different red sauces. I make three different, that's very good. Well, the first one we call tomato gravy, okay? When the south of Italy and Sicily, they call it gravy and not sauce, okay? So, a tomato gravy starts with tomato paste. You saute in olive oil, garlic, and onion, 
and you let that saute when that's good you add your tomato paste to that and you brown your paste in that now there used to be real discussion whether you brown your paste or you don't brown your paste that's right you know Sicilian dialogue on Sunday when you run out of stuff to talk about but I read somewhere recently that if you the more you cook your paste the more you brown your paste it draws out more of the acidity so you have less acidity in your sauce I, I add sugar about halfway through for each can of paste I add a can of water so I'm using a 12 ounce I use 12 ounces of so 12 of those cans they're not there it's not a liquid measure of ounces on there it's a weight measure so anyway so that's equal so that's real easy to know if I'm using a number 10 can I use a number six number 10 cans and you let that cook after about an hour of a steady boiling you add your, your sugar I add about a you know two tablespoons to a quarter cup of sugar and then you add your meat and then you let that cook for a long time four to six hours all right depending on how thick you want it all right because you add a lot of water and you reduce kind of like your gumbo you you know you put your roux in there and then you cook that for a long time um, <clears throat> then the second sauce is our marinara sauce now the marinara sauce we call our quick sauce we make it in here all the time mm, chopped garlic I put that this stuff in the food processor and grind it olive oil when the garlic gets fragrant I add crushed tomatoes and then dry basil and I cook that for about 45 minutes and it makes a beautiful marinara sauce that we use <clears throat> with our stuffed rolls okay then we have a boulanese sauce which is a meat sauce and I start with I brown the meat add the garlics and the onions and then I add tomato sauce to that and I let that cook and and cook and you add the water and you you bring that down and you let that cook and when it gets real good and delicious right before you serve it you stir in ragotta or heavy cream and then you serve that on that now when I was a child anytime we had red sauce there was a bowl of ragotta ricotta cheese on the table and you put that on there as well as Romano cheese and it blended and made your sauce but you know a real marinara sauce is more orange than the red once you add the um, ragotta cheese okay and you, that's that's the three you meant okay good all right thank you for the question okay look at that garlic it just cut like butter this is gonna be so good y'all gonna be so glad y'all came tonight let's take a look at that sausage is it some way we can move it out of there? Let's look. How long has it been in there, you think? 45 minutes? There's the sausage. 450 on convection. Now, convection means there's a small fan in the back of the oven. Ovens historically work for radiating heat from the bottom. But with the fan, it moves that hot air around, increases your cooking efficiency, shortens your baking time, and gives you this nice, crispy, finish like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these out of here After I give this a good shake oh there we go the accidental chef any accident could happen all right there we go sorry were you talking to me oh I'm glad you could have made me drop it all right <laughs> all right just cut these loose. Give these a cross cut here. Very nice. Everybody's going to get a little piece of meat on that. You might want to. You have a knife for them, Sheena? Or no? No. Anybody watch Game of Thrones? No? Okay. You watch Game of Thrones? Hello. Pretty intense. How we doing? Oh, they're beautiful. Look at that. Just set it down right there. Set it on that pot. Very nice. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, beautiful, huh? We need big plates. Maybe we should put the salad on one plate. Or put the pasta in there. 
put the salad in there? Salad. Yeah, let's put the salad in there. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and cut this heat off. And I'm going to add some olive oil to my salad. Liberally. About a cup. Okay. Then I'm going to add this is, um, red wine vinegar. Just going to control the flow with my finger. Who remembers when we ironed and we had water in a Coke bottle and we had to hold our finger on that, right? Yes. The what? Right, and then, then later on there was like an aluminum one, cap with a, with a uh, cork and you sprinkled it. Yes, because yeah, we're having boomer memory night tonight, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right. All right. Beautiful. So, and you can go ahead and toss that, either by hand or with some sort of tossing utensil. Oh, gloves would be perfect. All right. Do you live out this way? Oh, cool. You too? Somewhat. Yeah, I came from downtown. I took, you know I took the 815 into the city. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. When did we do? Have I, have I been here since we went down to uh, uh, Bertrand and cooked the pork with the some? Uh, what did we cook it with? Make sure. Now, the, the, you know the salad's tossed when there's no evidence of the egg yolk. Okay, you just keep tossing until that egg yolk, you see it? Mm -hmm. And you press it into the vinegar. You probably need a little more vinegar. There we go. Oh, Lord, I'm going to have to balance it with some oil. <laughs> and a little more salt. Okay, all right. If you have fear of coronary disease, you have fear of coronary disease. That's all I can say about that. All right. What is it? Fish on <laughs> Exactly. There we go. All right. I'm real tempted to put a little bit of this dripping in there. What do y'all think? Mm, y'all okay? Y'all all right with that? You know the fat. It's the fat we love. Oh, yeah. Get that all up there. Oh, my God. And is that gorgeous? Is that a gorgeous? Can y'all see it? Set it up here, Ann, so they can all see it. Oh, and you know what we forgot? We forgot. Uh, did, no, we put cheese in that. This cheese. All right. So we got the cheese goes in here with this. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Go for it. I'm going to toss some pasta into here. Now that's a picture, huh? Isn't that beautiful? Very colorful. Looks like the Italian flag. Did y'all see the spoon? Found it. Found it. Mm, yummy.
Is that pretty? Hmm. Pomelino. More what? How many more do you need? Oh yeah, we definitely need some more romaine. Look, Anne's an acolyte. <laughs> How is it? Is it fabulous? The one. That's all you had left? This one for us? Yeah. Fun. I don't only eat. I usually, when I get home at night, I have cereal. All right, how about that? Is that beautiful? Y'all ready for some of that? Yeah. Fun. Pretty, huh? Gotta hydrate. All right, any questions? Okay. You have a question. The garlic? Oh, absolutely. It, you buy it in the refrigerator. And it's got about a 30-day shelf life. If you're going to grind it, you can freeze it. It gets a little pale and translucent if you freeze it, but it'll still be potent. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever made your own pasta? Have I ever made my own pasta? Yes, yes. In fact, on Good Friday, my family has a tradition. We make this candy, but we start with pasta, but we fry it and then make it into balls, pigulata, and a syrup. But yeah, I make my own pasta. I have one of those attachments on my KitchenAid, and I make uh, mostly linguine, because, uh, not linguine, I mean, um, Alfredo, uh, the fettuccine, not linguine, fettuccine, because it's a nice flat, it's easy to manage. I really want to get into making some big sheets and making some rollovers. There's a place in Beaumont called Tony's, I think, and their manicotti is this circle of pasta, and then it just folds over. And it's just wonderful. And um, so, okay, what we got? Why don't you put some uh, sausage on each piece? You got another pair of these? Yeah. Good. Grazie. Use it for the sauce. Oh, y'all have little picker uppers, okay? Look, Boo, put some more plates right here. Okay, great. This needs sausage. No, I wanted, yeah, put some more plates up. Yeah, put them all over so we can get them on. There we go. I think you can put two. I think that's what I figured. Okay. Very good.
You're going to start from the back. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm a real messy cook. Really? Does it make you? Does it make you uncomfortable? Um, the um. No, you know, no, 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 no. The difference between a cook and a chef is the chef doesn't clean up. That's the difference. But yes, I clean up at my house. Yes, she's not going to do that. You wouldn't do it either, but then just starve. I don't care. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm on TV, sorry. Can you go edit that, please, uh, Danny, thanks. We got a five second delay. <laughs> look, look, put a, bring a little cheese on the top of each plate, on the sausage and on the pasta. Grazie. Never too much Romano cheese. That's my only rule in cooking. Never. And never skimp on the cheese. Never buy cheap cheese or cheap garbage bags. Or toilet paper. There. That's it. Those are what? Yeah, exactly. Are these the plates? We're done? Let me get a little tomato on there. Be generous with that. A rosa sauce. Rosa sauce. You know what? There is a sauce they call a pink sauce. Yes, pink. Here's your it sauce. is pink. Okay. I make this is how I make mine. I take butter and garlic, and then I add uh, sour cream. Um, before I add the sour cream, I add tomato paste. Then I add the sour cream to that, and it makes a nice. You know, you've had I make that uh, shrimp robin. Have you ever had that? That's the pink sauce. Ooh, that's good, huh, people? Everybody got one? And there's plenty. A question in the back. Brian, my man. What is a double boiler? Yes, what you got, my man? What is a double boiler? What is a double boiler? Great answer. Great, great question. Great question. Let's see how the answer is. A double boiler is, uh, here, let me give you this. You have two pots. You have a lower pot. Where is this? Like this. This is the lower pot. You put water in it about halfway full. Then there's another pot usually that sits on it that's connected. Sometimes it's gauged so it, it rests right on this and you got a tight seal. You see this one, you couldn't use this as a double boiler because this hole right here, you, you're using steam basically in the double boiler so you don't scorch what you're making. You usually use it to melt chocolate or to make a cream sauce where you want smooth, even heat. Okay? A lot of people write a recipes, they tell you just to use a bowl. Now, if you had this, this is the only pot you had, you could make a gasket with a rag, come sa, and then put your thing on there, and that would keep it. Because you don't want to lose that steam. Also, steam scorches, and that's the worst burn in the kitchen, so you definitely don't want that. So that's what a double boiler does. It allows you to make even smooth sauces and maintain a low temperature that's constantly melting uh, or doing something like that, that with some recipe that's going to scorch easily. So, great question. Usually buy them, they usually come together. I have one, it's, the bottom is copper and the top is, cr is pottery. So it's got a nice, it's got a nice thing. But usually I just use a bowl. 
and also in the gadget department we used to have a universal one that fits on any pot the top part okay any other questions very good. Very good. You liked it? Yes. Let's go.